Welcome to this training video. This training video is about articulate storyline and in particular the ruler, grid lines and guides. So that's all these bits here. So this is the ruler along the top and along the side. We've got grid lines which are these, uh, these squares, these smaller squares. And then we've got guides which are these bits here. You've got, there are four of them on the screen and they can be adjusted. So how did I turn them all on? That's the first question. Um, well, they're in view, so you'd normally start off in home. If I go to view, we've got ruler, grid lines, and guides. Click them all to turn them off. This is what I normally work with, and this is how you turn them on. Now, I'll be honest, I don't use the ruler very often. But if you're looking for this video, you might be interested in how to use a ruler or having it. Well, this is it. So you can see the size of things. I won't go into any more detail because well, I don't use it, but that is how you turn it on. It is in a view and ruler. Grid lines, now this I do find useful. So the grid lines is so I can line things up according to the grid. So you can see here we've got the grid lines on. And by the way, when you publish this, this will not be showing. You know, so you don't need to worry about having these little dots, or these little squares appearing on your e-learning course. This will only be when you're creating the content. So if I was to preview this, preview this slide, you can see the slide is blank. There we have it. So that is the grid lines. And then finally, we've got guides. Now guides are a bit different because the guides, if I hover over the, uh, the line for it, I can actually move it. So I can move it over to there, I can move it down to there. Now this is very good because you might want your titles or something lined up in a particular area. So if I was to insert, let's have a shape. I'm going to insert a square at the top there. And on every slide that I create, I'll go for a new slide. Let's go for a basic layout or title only. I know that I want that object or a object in the same top corner as that. So in this example, if I was to delete that, copy that, paste it, you can see it's all lined up perfectly. And you can move these lines according to wherever you want them. So it can be useful to maybe you are trying to line up some bullets. So I have sometimes we have some bullet points on the left and bullet points on the right as two separate text boxes. You can then line them up perfectly. Rather than having to literally put a flat object such as a ruler to your monitor. And yes, I have done that before. So this is a very useful tool. Now, something you might be interested in is snapping objects to grids and so forth. So the way to do it is in view along the top here, go to grid and guides. And then you've got this tick box here for snap objects to grid and you've got snap objects to other objects. So snapping objects to grid, if I was to tick that, press OK. Oh, by the way, you could tick this box here for display grid on screen. Press OK and I've got my grid. I can also remove my, my grid or grid lines, as it's known as here. Yeah, it's the same option in there. But if I have an object and I use this object, for example, as I move it along, you can see it's moving like you know an element at a time or a dot at a time. And that's because I've chosen to snap the object to the grid, which is very useful. But there might be occasions in which I want something not quite on the grid line. So I can have things, you can see moving up and down it's like by, you know, by, by dots. But if I, what I could do, I could create it like this. And if I wanted an object that was not quite to the grid line, I'd go to grid and guides. And I would untick that object there or untick that box. It says snap objects to grid. Okay, I create another one. And now I can, you can see I can move it much smaller amounts. Okay, so it's not going you know, by, by each grid line, it's going by just you know, much smaller amounts. So just bear that in mind. Also, when you've got grid and guides, tick the box here, you've got the ability to change the spacing of all of these dots on this grid line. The way to do it, so let's increase that to 20. I don't do it as 20 just to, just to make it obvious what I'm doing. Press OK. You can then see all of these dots have moved along, then there's big gaps between them. If I was to reduce that, 
Let's go back down to eight, which is what it was. Press OK. You can see all the dots are there as well. With these guides I was using, so you can see these guides on the screen. In fact, let's remove the grid lines. You've got the guides on the screen. If I go to grid and guides, I can also lock the guides. So tick the box, press OK. And now I can't move these anyway. You know, so if I hover my mouse over it, nothing happens. If I click on this button and undo lock guides, press OK. If I hover my mouse over the guides, they change again. So you can make edits to them. And then if you wanted to, once again, click that button, go to Lock Guides, click OK. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, if I'm moving things around the screen, I want to make sure that these guides stay in the exact place that I wanted them. If I was working in these guides and I did not have this ticked, I might accidentally move things as I'm trying to move objects. So you know, it's very easy to do. You can see that my mouse cursor is changing there. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, and uh, keep watching for more videos on Articulate Storyline and other topics.